Hello friends. So today's video has been requested numerous times and is often talked about on the Ubuntu's Discord server. So I thought I'd best get round to answering it. And as you can see from the title of this video, it's about sharing and collaborating in OpenTunes. So that's considering moving an OpenTunes project to another computer, or sharing it with someone else, so you can both work on it. Maybe splitting a project up so that someone animates one character while you animate another, or someone else could take care of the rigging so that you can animate it afterwards. Or for someone to draw the ink lines over your sketch, or to draw the in-betweens. Basically, it's about understanding the OpenTunes files. And doing all of this is really easy once you get your head round the files that OpenTunes creates. And to use OpenTunes for anything other than simple projects, you really need to understand the OpenTunes file structure. But especially so if you need to work with other people. And I won't go through every single file that it can create, but I will cover the essential ones that you'll all use. So how does OpenTunes save a project? Well, if you don't know, OpenTunes doesn't save a single file for each project. Instead, it creates a folder structure for a project and the associated files are stored in that folder. So in its simplest form, to share a project, you just need to zip up this folder and its contents and then copy it to a new computer or email it to your friend or use a file sharing system like Dropbox. But there can sometimes be more to it than that. So let's take a deeper look. So if we create a new project by clicking the new project button on the starting pop-up. Firstly, you can see that I've got three locations for my projects. You'll likely only have one, but you can add more by going to the Preferences dialog and then ticking the Custom box at the bottom here, then typing in the path to your projects or clicking the ellipsis and browsing to the folder. So let's create that new project. And you can see there's seven folders where the files are stored and you can change the names of the folders here if you want to. Normally there's no need to. And then at the bottom, you've got three tick boxes which have put the drawings, inputs and extras folders inside a subfolder with the scene name. And this allows you to have the drawing separate for each scene. But usually you want to share the scenes between a project. But that's your choice. So when you're ready, click OK. And you'll notice in the Windows Explorer view on the right, when I do that, a folder appears with the name of my project on it. And you can already take a look inside there and you can see those seven folders and there's also a project file. And the project file details some of those settings we've just seen. So if I open that up, and you'll notice it's just a plain text XML file. So if you want to, you can make edits in here directly. So the next thing you need to do is to create a scene. So that'll appear in the scenes folder of the project. So let's take a look in there and we'll create a scene just called scene one. And you can set various options for the scene, for the camera, for the output and the frame rate. So let's hit create scene. And by hitting create, nothing yet appears on disk until you hit save. And it's only when you save that that file appears. So I'd always recommend hitting save all directly after creating a scene to make sure the scene can be written to disk. If it can't, you should be told of any problems. And the same goes for when you create levels. Always hit save first before you start drawing in them. Okay, so that's everything you need for a project. So if you want to share this, you can simply go back to your projects folder and on a Windows machine, you can right click on your project folder, go to send to, and then choose a zipped folder. And that creates you a zip, so we can rename that if we want to. And if you're going to pass this project around a lot, it's probably worth numbering it with a version number or detailing its current stage of production. So if you look on disk and find 10 different zip files, you'll know which one you want to open. So then you can email or share that with your friend. All they need to do is then unzip it you can do that on a Windows machine by right-clicking and then just Extract All. And there's the extracted folder. Now remember, this folder here is a folder to wrap up the contents of what you've zipped. So you don't move this one to your project's file. You go inside that and this is the project folder. And you can tell that by going inside there and seeing the project file and the seven folders. Now here's a quick tip. If you'd like to change the name of your project, there's two things you need to change. Firstly, it's the name of the containing folder, so I'll change that. And then also the project file name. Now, unlike other file types, you can't just rename everything before the file extension of XML. You need to leave the underscore OTPRJ, that's for OpenTunes project. 
So just rename the first part. And then if we go up a folder, we can then copy project beta into the projects folder in my OpenToon stuff. Now if I want to, I can then load that scene from disk. And you can see there we've loaded scene one from project beta. Okay, that's a simple way to share a whole project, but if you're working with somebody else collaboratively on a single project, you'll both be working on different parts of the project at the same time. So you don't want to be sharing the whole project because you'll overwrite their changes. So this is where you need to understand exactly what the files are. So firstly, let's take a look at the three drawing level types. So I'll go into the project folder and the drawings folder so you can see them appear. And I'll create one of each drawing level type. So firstly, a vector level. And I'll give it a name of the drawing layer type because that name is used for the file on disk. Now in here you can see it's set as a tunes vector level. It also tells you where the file will be created in the drawings folder. So that's a handy way to find out where the drawing will be. And I'll hit OK. So the drawing level is created. Nothing appears on disk yet until you save everything. So I'll hit save all. And you see a vector PLI file appear on disk. So next we create a tunes raster level. So again I'll name this after the level type. And you can set various settings on this drawing, like the size of the drawing. And you notice, again, it's saved in the drawings folder. So I'll hit OK. A level is created in the X sheet, and immediately you notice the files are created on disk, even before you hit save. But as always, I still hit save all immediately, which saves the scene file as well. And this creates two files on disk, a TLV file, which is a tunes level, and a TPL, which is the tunes palette file, containing the colors used in that one level. So if we create another Tunes raster level, you see we get another level file and another palette file. So the palettes are independent between drawing levels. Finally, we create a raster level. And this time you see the file is going to be created in the extras folder. So let's take a look in there. So I've called this level raster and as I press OK, immediately again, drawing number one is saved to disk. Now raster level is different from the other two level types as you get one file on disk for each drawing in the level. So the file name is prefixed with the level name you've given it and then you get a four digit number which covers the drawing number for this particular drawing. So now you know where all the files are on disk. If you've added drawings to one of the levels you can just share those files with the other person. Or if they've made an edit to their files they can send them to you and you can put them in the correct place on disk. Now sometimes if you make a mistake with the files and you put them in the wrong place, you need to try and figure out where to put them and where they are. So there's two ways to do this. So I just rename the Tunes Raster 2 level and then reload the scene. You'll see that what happens is the name of the level is shown in red. And that's because OpenTunes can't find the appropriate file on disk. And the best way to figure out where it's trying to find the file is by right clicking on the frame choosing level settings and then you see here it tells you it's looking in the drawings folder for a file called tunesraster2.tlv so you just need to find that file and put it back in this location so if I just rename that and then reload this scene again now I can find the file so you have the drawing back on the X sheet so the final thing to consider with files in OpenTunes is when you use external files and that can be drawings for background or characters, or music and sound effects. Now any of these external files you add in the same way. All you need to do, you just drag them from your Explorer view into OpenTunes, and it'll create a column for them. So I've got two drawings here. I'll drag in Import Test first, and here you can see why I dragged that in. So you get the option to import or load the drawing. And this is where it can get confusing. And basically, to help with sharing, or even if you don't intend to share the project, it's often best to choose Import, because this copies the drawing into the project's Extras folder. So if I do that, and if I look into the project and go to Extras, you'll see a copy of the image there. And this is useful for a few reasons. If you delete or move the drawing from the original location, it doesn't matter, because it's contained in the project. And it also means that you can zip up the project folder 
and have all of the assets available within that one folder, which makes it easier to share or easier to back up and store. So the other option is load. So if I drag in a different drawing and then choose load, this time you notice the drawing isn't stored in the extras folder, but it's still created in its own column on the X sheet. So again, if these two files from the original location were moved or deleted, the next time you open up your project, only the imported image is available because that's in the local project folder. The referenced image isn't available anymore. So now if you put the drawing back in the original location and reloading the scene, it's now available. And the same as the drawing levels, if you right click and choose level settings, it tells you where it's trying to load the drawing from. And the loaded image shares a full path on disk, whereas the imported image is in the extras folder. So there's one final thing to show you for this, and that is in the project's scenes folder, there is a tunes scene file. There's also a backup file of the previous time you saved. But if we open up the tunes scene file, this again is just a plain XML file. So if I change the language to be XML, I can then take a look through this. So it has various information about the cameras, the outputs, all of the levels that are listed, and then also details of the X sheet showing exact frame numbers of which drawings exposed on which frame. But if we take a search through here for JPEG files, here you can see the two JPEG images that I dragged in. So there's the import test image, which is stored in the extras folder, and the load test, which is stored in its local original location. So if you're comfortable editing XML files, you can open it up and check or make changes to any level files or drawings that you've got referenced in here. But please do make a copy of this file before you make any changes, just in case you make a mistake. And further up, you can see the tunes levels and the vector levels and the raster levels all listed in here as well. Okay, so that's a quick tour around the project's files. And hopefully that gives you a better idea of what makes up a project. Now you can move it or share it with someone else. So why not take a look at the projects you've already created and see where the files are on disk and make yourself more comfortable with them. And that'll make sharing and collaborating so much easier. And that's a guarantee. Mm -hmm.